Do you think it's possible for a woman in her 40s or at any age, for that matter, to start from scratch? Is it possible for that woman to find her passion and achieve financial independence? Without a doubt, today's episode will offer us a lot of clarity on this subject from a person who has been there and done that. You are listening to Her Dinero Matters, the podcast helping Latinas have increased confidence and control over their finances. My name is Jen Hempel, and as an accredited financial counselor, my mission is to help you be more confident and simplify your finances so you can save more, get out of debt quicker, and build your wealth. I'm going to say this once. Women should be in the know of their household finances, period. But you probably already know this with the name of this podcast being Her Dinero Matters. Of course, there's nothing wrong with your partner taking care of the finances or being financially supported by your partner. This is your host, Jen Hempel. Thank you for joining me in this conversation. Today's guest story is one of having it all financially having dreams but not pursuing them, and then losing everything and having to start over. Our conversation with Catherine Samuto, actress, entrepreneur, and podcaster, will remind you of the strength that lives inside of you as a woman when you acknowledge your power. Here are some highlights of today's episode. Understanding why it is so important for women to be financially independent. Two key lessons Kat learned after experiencing a financially abusive relationship, and what the main red flag is of a controlling partner. Of course, after hearing this discussion, I know you're going to have some thoughts to add to this conversation or even some questions that come to mind. We'll go into how you can do so later in this episode. But for now, let's get this conversation started and meet our guest, Catherine Samuto. Bienvenida, Kat. I'm so thrilled to have you here. I know we've connected recently, but I've really, really enjoyed getting to know you just offline and getting to know who you're about. And you're just such an incredible person. And I know we'll talk about this later, but I know you interviewed me for your podcast, which I had a blast on. So I'm excited to turn the tables or or the mic around or the tables around and interview you. So welcome. Thank you so much, gracias. It's such a pleasure to be here. Yes, I did interview you. And by the way, your episode is doing amazing. We already have over 50,000 downloads. Wow, that's amazing. The feedback is really great because now we know people really love talking about money and they love your honest and, and fresh approach. Love it. Well, thank you for sharing. Well, let's really turn the tables because this is about you. So Kat, take us back in time. We want to know a time in your life where maybe you were a little girl. I know you definitely had one in adulthood, but something in your life that really impacted you on how you view money. Because I know we're going to dig into your relationship story, but I want you to let me know something, whether you're a teenager or you were just a little girl, really an experience, something that you witnessed that really impacted you to how you perceive money even today. Yeah, so my story is probably a little different from most people because I started working when I was four years old. My dad was a TV and movie producer, and he would put me to do a bunch of TV commercials. In his mind, he thought, well, you know, that's what my daughter should do. And in his world, it was completely normal to have kids working. So my first memories as a kid is to literally be working on a TV commercial. So work and making money, interestingly enough, was something that started from my very, very early age. And I know usually like kids and teenagers, they don't work and their parents give them an allowance, la, 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 la. But in my case, of course, my father controlled the money, but I thought it was normal. I actually thought, you know, that's what kids do. It was only when I was like a teenager, a little older, that I realized, okay, my, my situation is a little different and that's not how most people grow up. However, it always made me very disciplined in terms of working and making money. So from a very early age, I always thought, okay, this is really important. We should make money. Work is great, not just because we bring home a paycheck, 
but because we're productive. So I always had like this great relationship with being productive. Very, very interesting. And this started in Brazil, right? It started in Brazil, but my father, he wasn't Brazilian. He was French. <laughs> interesting. Okay. Yeah, my mom was Brazilian, so I was born in Brazil. And But my father worked a lot here in California because, of course, the, the entertainment industry, the heart of the entertainment industry is here. So we used to work here a lot. So I would literally fly to California and work with my dad on t television sets, movie sets, TV commercials. Uh, I used to do a ton of modeling because back then we didn't have social media. It was more like catalogs, modeling catalogs. So we, we literally, I grew up traveling between Brazil and California and Miami and, and France. So my childhood was definitely very chaotic in that way. But in a way, now looking back, it was good because it always gave me the discipline that women should work and make their own money. Love it. So you have had experience since the age of four in acting and modeling, and that's something that you still do today. And I want to talk about that a little later, but I want to move on to another story that really had an impact on you. And because you shared with me about your former husband, and I know we talked about that on your podcast, and you had a really just like incredible in the sense of like, it's not really credible, like I cannot believe this happened type of experience. So talk to us about what you're most comfortable sharing and, and maybe some lessons that you have learned, especially for the person that's listening right now that is maybe in a similar situation or about to be and this would would help this person yeah absolutely so as I said I was always working 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 so by the time I was finishing high school and I decided I wanted to go to college because I wanted to have the college experience so I went to college I graduated I paid for my my studies. So that, that was amazing. And I met my husband when I was really young. I was just graduating from college. So I think I was 22, 23. And he was a very wealthy man, very powerful man, huge company all over the country. And I was very young and naive, right? I think like most 20 something year olds are. And slowly but surely, he convinced me that I shouldn't work, that I didn't need to make that kind of money, that he made so much more money than me. Uh, I think we talked about on my podcast, he used, he used this phrase that, of course, now looking back, I think was extremely ab abusive, but he used to say to me, why are you going to go to work if I make in one day more than it takes you a month to make? It's so stupid. And of course, now looking back, yeah, it's a form of, of abuse and, and control. But because I wanted to preserve the relationship and we were dating and dating and dating and eventually got married, I... I kind of got convinced by him that it was kind of stupid to work so much and I decided to preserve my marriage. And as the years went by, I worked less and less and less to make my husband happy. And so take us through. So you, you work with less and less and time has uh, progressed. So what in the relationship as you started working less and less, did those comments just kind of go away like what happened after take us through that yeah so no the comments never went away and I have I, I tell the story and I wrote a book about it and I think it's important to tell the story because I know there are a lot of women out there that are going through the same situation uh the the power the difference in power so my husband was a multi-millionaire and I was this young girl our age difference was huge he was 20 years older than me I was much younger and as much as I made my money, I didn't make millions of dollars, nowhere near the, the, the kind of money he made. Uh, and so obviously a way for him to control me was to convince me that I did not need to make my own money. And I know it happens to so many women out there when they get married. Now looking back, because I think everything in life should be a lesson, this is what I talk about all the time on my podcast, on my social media, everything that I do. I tell girls... It doesn't really matter what kind of money your husband makes. Make sure you always keep your own money because if a guy really loves you and they're going to be a great partner to you, they're going to encourage you to be financially independent. If a big red flag that obviously I didn't see 
if they're constantly convincing you to stop working, don't do this, don't do that, they are not trying to be a partner to you. They're trying to control you. And that's obviously, we all know, never ends up in a great place. Because in my case, like it happens to a lot of women, I started relinquishing my financial independence. So as the years went by, he would give me an allowance and he would give me credit cards, na, 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 na. And I was more and more and more under his control, which obviously is not a good idea. Right. So basically from what I'm hearing you say, would you say the lessons you have learned are the the power of words in terms of what he shared with you? And it makes sense. Like it's not anything. And for you listening that maybe are hearing some similar things and are starting to like believe it. Yeah, maybe it's not worthwhile. I mean, working, what does it make sense? I think it's normal just because you're if you're in the relationship and it's you and your partner and that's it. And that's what you hear. Naturally, you're just that's just what's your it becomes your reality and and I think unless you have this great support network and maybe you did but in terms of uh, that you constantly hear the opposite you know something else you're just gonna believe it and I think that's just natural so I don't think people should ever feel guilty or ashamed for believing what their their partners believe unfortunately a lot of women go through the same in maybe not as an abusive marriage as mine was because he was extremely verbally abusive. But a lot of women are housewives, which is very understandable. A lot of them have kids. A lot of them are home taking care of the house, the kids and the husband. But I do hear stories all the time, and maybe you do too, that they get in a situation that they're trapped, that they're like, oh my God, now even if I want to get out, what am I going to do? I have no money. And that becomes a very serious problem. This is why I think that it's so important to talk about women being financially independent. No matter how much money your husband makes, you should always figure out a way to have a side gig, a side job, something to stash some money away like we say, in case of an emergency, right? But yeah, in case things change, because life changes all the time, at least you don't feel like, oh my God, I'm stuck in this situation because I don't have any money to go anywhere. Yeah, and I have heard it many, many times, um, and especially if if it's an abusive relationship or even when the spouse, uh, or in the cases of infidelity, uh, and maybe the person is not happy anymore in that relationship, but because maybe because they didn't earn money or because they don't have their own money, like you said, that financial dependence is not about financial independence. And I think from my perspective and what we're talking about is not having a lot of money. It's ha- it's about having money to, to back up on. Have you ever wondered how on earth your friend bought their home or why your coworker meticulously splits the tab down to the last Diet Coke? Other People's Pockets is a show about other people's money. Host Maya Lau asks people from all walks of life to get radically transparent about their personal finances in actual dollar amounts. You'll hear from a dominatrix who gets paid to bully men at the ATM, an elite scientist who couch surfed to survive, a business prodigy who flipped his services from drugs to dumbbells and more. You can find Other People's Pockets wherever you get your pockets. Podcasts. I think that's important to distinguish because I know right now the word financial independence is really equated with just a ton of money, right? But and what we're talking about is more to have this backup plan and have that money because in those cases of infidelity or in things like or abusive relationship, people do feel stuck because they have nowhere to go or don't know or don't have that confidence of what's next. It feels like that was your biggest uh, lesson for you. I think it was, you know, yeah, first for me, and I think probably because I obviously now my age, fast forward more than 20 years, I don't think I would ever be in that position again. I would never be with a partner that would be verbally abusive again. But looking backwards, it took me many, many years to realize that this is unhealthy. This is not love. Suffocating someone to depend on them is not love. It's control. And it's a really bad idea. But I didn't see that then. So it literally took me 14 years to realize, you know, I deserve better. 
I can work, I, I can be an independent woman and still have, have a supportive partner. And then, of course, because he was so rich, he used to say to me, you know, like I think we talked a little bit about that on my podcast, that once he died, I would have all this money and all our assets and we had a will, la, 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 la. And there was nothing I had to worry about. And we had joint bank accounts. So I didn't worry so much about the future as I should have because I thought he was taking care of everything. But obviously now looking back, I know that a healthy partnership, both partners know equally what is going on. And it's completely okay for women to have their own separate independent bank accounts. It, it's not that you're doing something against your marriage, right? Right. So basically, after he passed, you thought you were going to be taken care of, but that's that wasn't the case. So tell us what happened next in terms of because you basically had to from being good financially to zero, I would say, or tell us about that what happened next? Yeah, so he, the more money he made, the more he drank. So my husband became an alcoholic. And he decided at the very end of his life that, you know, the, the alcoholism was so advanced. He decided he didn't want to treat it. He decided he wanted to die. It's a very long, crazy story. But it was like two years of a total ordeal because it's a disease that kills you very slowly. And so we decided, you know, we redid the will and everything and, and paid for very expensive attorneys because he had a lot of money and all this stuff. Once he died, a lot of crazy things happened. And basically he had a CFO taking care of, of his company. He had a son from a previous marriage that we didn't see for 10 years. It's like a really crazy story. And once this son found out that he was dying, the son came and basically cutting the story really short, made a pact with the CFO of the company. The CFO made his son CEO of the company and they took everything over. They took the company over. They took all the assets over. They stopped paying me my allowance, quote unquote. And I ended up losing everything. It's a very long, complicated story, but basically that's what happened. And people ask me, but what do you mean you guys had a will? And this is when I say, wills are definitely a great idea. I agree with you. You mentioned that on my podcast. However, sometimes the courts ignore them or by the time the courts look at the will, all the assets are gone because... It takes a long time, you know, I don't want people to think that, oh, I have a will, I'm going to go to court tomorrow and everything is going to be great. This is what I thought. I was a very naive immigrant that thought all the laws in the United States protect us, but that's not how things happen. So by the time I went to court and had to prove everything and had the judge read the will over and over and over again, two years went by and they basically paid themselves thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in salaries, bonuses, da 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 until they trashed a multi-million dollar business down to the ground. And there was nothing left. So I found myself having to start my life over from scratch in my 40s. And I really believe what saved me is that I had the work discipline. Because I know a lot of people, including some of my friends, looked at me like, oh my God, what are you going to do now? You lost everything. Are you going to jump off the balcony of your multi-million dollar apartment? And I, this is why ever since this happened to me, I became a huge advocate for women's financial independence because I don't want to get messages anymore from women that say, oh my God, I am going through the same. What am I going to do? My husband is abusing me. I don't have anywhere to go. So I hope through our work, my work, your work as a money expert, our listeners out there, listen to us. If you're sitting there at home now and your husband is taking care of all your money, you start taking precautions now because no matter how much you love each other, life changes and things change. Yes. The two things that I, I wanted to say with that, from what you said, no matter just basically in hearing the story, some of the things that we can take away, whether it's divorce, whether it's your partner passing, things can get complicated. You can have all the paperwork and everything done and you should, 
but every situation is different and how it evolves can be different because whether it's divorce or whether it's passing, there's emotions and there's self-interest and can be ego, especially if it's a, it's a big estate. So all that to say, that's why it's so important. And I just, I know we talked about it. <laughs> before, but just so important to have your money, to have your financial dependence, to even have a plan B if if you will. But just, it's really, really important because again, everything, you can have all your ducks in a row, but that doesn't mean it's going to go according to plan. And Kat, you're a, t- a testament, but now you're thriving. You've been able to pick yourself and I applaud that. And like you said, you are an advocate. You have this podcast. Would you say that this experience, uh, life experience, experience that you had was a big influence on the decision for doing your podcast? Yeah, so this is what I will say, <laughs> a few different things. He died in 2018. So for one year, like 2018 until like to the beginning of 2020, a year and a half, of course, I was going to court and fighting and try to prove, no, 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 almost died in the process lost everything then i'm like okay i gotta pick myself up by the bootstraps and start over so i'm not gonna lie and say it was easy because it's not it's a nightmare and i hope nobody goes through what i've been through it's an uphill battle and of course especially when you gotta start from zero absolutely zero however i will say that it's very empowering Because when people take something from you, like they take your assets away, or even like when you're going through divorce, right? A lot of women go through divorce and they're like, oh my God, my husband took almost all the money. How I'm going to tell you guys, as hard as it is, if you do one little step at a time, every little step, every little accomplishment, it will give you more power and more strength to move on. So instead of hiding under the blankets and focusing on the problem, Roll up your sleeves and fight because I promise you every single day, every tiny little victory will make you feel stronger as a woman. And that's what happened to me. I've been through hell and high water. I had to accept any job that came my way. So the podcast happened because before the podcast, I was working at a radio station. I was offered a job at a radio station and I had a very successful show there and COVID hit. And then boom, the radio station shut down. Everything shut down. No photo shoots, no work, no nothing. So I was sitting at home and I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? And I started talking about my experiences. How am I go- about dating after being married for 14 years, about everything that I was going through. And I started getting hundreds and hundreds of messages from women all over the world that were going through the same. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to roll with it. And three years later... I have a great successful podcast with about 70,000 downloads per episode um, and a voice to women out there that, that are going through the same thing. And I know it can be extremely discouraging. So I hope, number one, yes, take precautions. Don't make the same mistakes that I made. Do not be in the hands of any partner, any husband, 100%, right? And I'm sure Jen is the first one to say that. Uh, And number two, if it happens to you like it happened to me, don't sit home crying because that's not going to make you money. Literally, like my mom used to say, pull yourself up by the bootstraps. That's a very old expression. And go for it. Don't be embarrassed to take any job. Uber Eats, DoorDash, dog walking, it doesn't matter what you have to do because every door can open you many other doors. And maybe one year from now, you're going to be in a so much better place than you are now. And that's what happened to me. Right. No, I love that. And you're such an inspiration, Kat. And I did not know you worked at a radio station. That is so interesting. I love it. I'm I'm sure with the messages that you get, I'm curious to know, I know we had just recently had the, or you recently interviewed me for your podcast. Prior to that, did you receive messages in terms of with your audience, like questions? around money like that what you saw that were money related I'm curious to know what what are some questions that came up in your community or just conversations 
around money. All the time. And this is one of the main reasons why we had been wanting to do a money episode for a long time and we didn't know exactly how to approach it. I didn't want to bring like, you know, a serious financial expert or something. And so when I met, I was like, okay, she's perfect for my community. And sure enough, the feedback is, has been incredible. I got to share that with you because yeah, girls, they send questions and comments every day. Like I depend on my husband. Oh my God, I'm, I'm living with my boyfriend and he's the one that makes money or, oh, I'm so discouraged because I have a nine to five job. How do I take it to the next level? How do I become successful? And we talked about that on my episode, you gave them a bunch of ideas. Like we understand a lot of people need a nine to five job. Not everybody has the entrepreneur mind, but you can always start side gigs. You can always work extra on the weekends. It really depends on your drive and your goals. Like you, you, you talked a lot about that on my podcast. So I highly encourage people to go and listen if they have not, because you gave a million of ideas that I agree with. Nobody's going to get rich working nine to five. And yes, maybe if your husband makes a ton of money or your boyfriend, whoever you're dependent on, you know, roll up your sleeves. Don't sit at home watching TV, be proactive. And everybody, like, I think you mentioned something like, I love that phrase. I'm sure I'm not paraphrasing exactly what you said, but you said something like, find your value and find the skills that you're good at. And I love that you mentioned that because we were talking about sugar babies and how much I do not like sugar babies because I think they're doing a disservice to women. I think it's a horrible idea. And then you said, yeah, I challenge you to find your value in the relationship. You said something like that, right? Yeah, and thank you uh, for mentioning that. I And one of the things that I know we talked about as well, and I will be sure to link up the episode in the show notes. I know one of the things that we talked about on your podcast, and I wanted to make sure that we, we talked about it here, just briefly mention it, was really the importance of, yes, we've been talking about financial independence. We've been talking about earning our own money and, and valuing our worth, but also the that when you do that, your your partner should value that. And that's, that is a, a good relationship. So I just wanted to make sure that we, we really mention that. And number two, even though we're talking about financial independence, and I mentioned maybe having a plan B, and really just making sure how are you going to take care of yourself in the worst case scenario. I'm not saying for you to really be uh, pessimistic about any relationship. I'm just saying take care of you. The partner is going to value you you and but and I'm just saying just take care of you so I'm not saying I wanted to make sure that I I don't want people listening right now think should I prepare for the worst it's just it's really you want to make sure you're prepared to thrive but you know just in case something happens good life we don't know we don't know we don't know how to prepare for the unexpected so we can just do the best but just really enjoy the journey I don't want people to walk away and think oh my gosh this is I'm afraid right? I agree. I am the most positive person on the planet. <laughs> I, I'm super positive. I always think in, I believe in energy and I, I'm all, like, I use that phrase a lot. Like I always feed the solutions. I never feed the problems. So I'm never thinking like, Oh my God, something's wrong. Nah, 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 nah. I'm always focusing on the solutions, but you are right. Life changes with a, a blink of an eye. And I am living proof of that. And many times when I'm walking around Beverly Hills with my dog, I laugh at the universe because I think like 10 years ago, I was sitting in my mansion in Beverly Hills. And if somebody told me, oh, 10 years from now, you're going to be starting from zero in a tiny apartment and you're going to be buying furniture all over again. And you're going to be starting, you're going to be working seven days a week again, 15 hours, 20 hours a day. I wouldn't have believed it. But sure enough, things change. So it is better to go after your goals, you know, challenge yourself to make more money. And please, I am begging you, do not be completely dependent on a partner because it's a really dead end street. Things can backfire on you and it's not fun uh, starting over from zero. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Kat, this has been an incredible uh, conversation. Like I mentioned uh, today earlier, you are just such an inspiration. And yes, you are definitely <laughs> super positive, super energetic. You are thriving. I, and you're just, you've been a success. You continue to 
grow and I'm excited to see what's in store for you in the future. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. You are amazing too. And you are very inspiring and you're very inspiring to me and my listeners loved you. And thank you so much for doing such a fabulous podcast and talking about such an important topic that so many times go unspoken because it's so delicate, right? Most people don't want to talk about money. And I am so grateful that there are people like you that put this, this topic out there because it's time that, you know, every woman on the planet is financially independent. Thank you, Kat. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you as well. Mwah. I know this story probably gave you goosebumps as it deals with a sensitive subject. I'm truly grateful for Catherine for sharing her story with us. It really makes us reflect on the importance of not just making our money, but pursuing our dreams. This conversation also highlighted financial abuse. Remember that financial abuse is a serious issue that can have devastating and long lasting impacts on the lives of women across the world. It often involves controlling a person's access to funds and other financial resources, preventing them from making decisions about their money, of course, also pursuing their dreams, and in turn, it creates financial dependency. This form of abuse can have especially severe impact on a woman's ability to escape that abusive relationship as abusers can use financial control to further exploit them. It is important to support individuals who are experiencing this form of abuse and raise awareness of its prevalence and the consequences of this financial abuse. If you're going through a similar situation, you are not alone, even though it feels like you are. Or if you know someone who is, make sure to let them know they're not alone and help them and, and support them. Of course, I hope Catherine can serve as motivation for you. You are amazing. And I tell you that time and time again, and you deserve the best that life has to offer. You can connect with Kat over at catontheloose.info. Of course, we link that in today's show notes. Again, the link is cat, K-A-T, info. Now, I know that this conversation, as I stated earlier, is sensitive and it can evoke a lot of different emotions. I'm going to be doing a special live stream in our community on Monday, April 3rd. In other words, the Monday after this episode is published. So if you are listening to this, the day it is published, we are doing the live on Monday. Again, that is Monday, April 3rd. I will be going more in depth about today's topic and answering your questions. To take part and to get the details you need, definitely have to join our community over at jenhemphill.com forward slash community. That's jenhemphill.com forward slash community. Of course, if you can't make it live, you can access the recording in the community, but of course, you still have to join the community. So I hope that you join us. That is jenhemphill.com forward slash community. Next week, we are going to be doing a solo episode. So it's just going to be you and I and we're going to be talking about the topic of financial housekeeping, what it is, what you need to do, and spoiler alert, I'm going to give you a checklist. So more on that. So stay tuned and don't miss next week's episode. Bueno, pues, that is everything. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to join us and tune into the show and support the show. You can check out the show notes over at jenhemphill.com forward slash 346. That is jenhemphill.com forward slash 346. Remember, that being the reina of your money starts now simply by claiming it. I believe in you and so should you. Nos hablaremos el próximo jueves.